Hey everybody. So I want to talk about this whole Roe versus Wade decision and not to espouse any political viewpoint because my viewpoint's actually kind of sort of nuanced. I know, big surprise, right? Um, but I just, I see a lot of fallacious arguments. I see a lot of narcissistic, uh, moral posturing, uh, a lot of cognitive dissonance on all sides of the issue. And the one thing I'm not actually seeing is where anybody has actually read the Supreme Court decisions. Nobody's actually read Roe versus Wade or Casey or, uh, or the decision to overturn it. You can't have a productive conversation unless you know what's actually in the court decisions and why, you, and if you don't know why the Supreme Court is overturning it, I mean, what, what chance do we have of getting it right when it comes time to vote? Okay? So, I think this is a very uh, dangerous, uh, dangerous for society kind of situation where there is a massive impact. It's, it's a situation like Don't Look Up. The movie Don't Look Up, if you haven't seen it, watch it, okay? Where the comet is coming to crash into the planet and everybody's too busy moral posturing to actually make uh, objective decisions. So the fallacies on, on both sides that, that I see is you have on, on the, the pro-choice side, people are saying it's really quite simple actually. If you don't, if you can't have a baby, you can't have a comp, you can't have an opinion, right? You don't. Men don't have babies. Men are trying to control women's bodies. It's what they do. Men are always trying to control women. Blah blah blah, right? It's that simple, really. If it was that simple, there wouldn't be an, an enormous series of Supreme Court decisions on the subject, would there? So, it's not simple. And the same is true the the pro-life side of things, where they're like, it's 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 quite simple, actually. Life begins at conception, and it's murder, right? It's infanticide. It's you're killing babies, right? You're murdering babies. You know, it's murdering children. It's quite simple to understand. Yeah, well, same thing is true. If it was that simple, there would not be a long series of Supreme Court decisions. And... You know, people don't actually want to take the time and put in the work to actually learn about what's in the Supreme Court decisions and what's motivating uh, the overturn. So, right, it, I, I would say that, you know, it's quite simple. If you haven't actually read what's in any of these things, you don't get to have an opinion. How, you know, how about that? I think that's a good place to start, right? because it's it's not it's not simple just because you want something to be simple for your own emotional regulation does not automatically confer simplicity on a very controversial uh, subject just it doesn't you want it to be simple but it's complicated so we can just pretend it's simple because that's That'll make me feel better. No. No, it, it it doesn't work like that. And I think probably the biggest detail that people are missing in this is the fact that if they overturn Roe versus Wade, it's not going to uh, outlaw abortion like nationwide. It's not. Um... It, abortion is not going to suddenly become illegal everywhere in the United States uh, because there's already a massive network of state laws that regulate it. Now, also understand that Roe versus Wade is not a highly consequential Supreme Court decision. 
It's not. Uh, nor did nor has, did it do what it was supposed to do. It hasn't. It didn't settle the debate. Um, it did not confer all of these uh, reproductive rights to women like everybody thinks that it does. Uh, believe it or not, it, it doesn't, right? How do I know this? Well, look at the proof. Uh, ever since Roe was passed, there's been nothing but more state laws written, more challenges to it. The debate did not get settled by Roe v. Wade. Um, nor did Roe v. Wade uh, produce any kind of satisfactory conclusions about abortion. Why? Because for the, the last 50 years, it has been the target of constant challenges in the court system. So it laid nothing to rest. But perhaps the most uh, damning uh, piece of objective evidence against Roe that I think matters is the fact that there is a later court decision, Casey, Casey versus I forget who, uh, I think it's Casey versus Ferguson, maybe, maybe I'm mixing up the names, I don't know. But there's a subsequent Supreme Court finding in 1991 that basically reaffirmed Roe v. Wade. However, the Supreme Court uh, steered clear of reaffirming uh, many of the the um, the justifications and 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 a lot of the stuff that was in Roe, like the right to privacy, that was a privacy issue, uh, and their stipulations of uh, when does life begin and all that stuff. Uh, the Supreme Court justices steered clear of reaffirming many of the uh, assertions of Roe v. Wade, right? Casey was just basically, for all intents and purposes, like, no, we're still going to have abortions in this country, but we're not going to rehash Roe v. Wade because it is terribly flawed logic. Um, now, what do you get when you have something as consequential as abortion um, supported up by terribly flawed arguments? Uh, it's not good. Uh, it is, um, it was passed with an agenda, not with objectivity, clearly. Now, the agenda seems fairly well intended, you know, women's rights to choose all that stuff. But regardless of intentions, you have to look at what kind of precedent it sets. And I can tell you exactly why people should be more concerned about Roe and even if you're pro-choice, um, why it's why we shouldn't miss it, okay? Just imagine this for a second. Imagine if somebody like Trump support, uh, appointed three, uh, three conservative justices, right? Now, let's say, for example, these conservative justices pass a decision that bans abortion. Just imagine that for a moment right? Where they, they, they say, Hey, you know what? There will be no abortions in this country, period. Uh, women cannot control their bodies. They don't have the right to body autonomy because it's life starts from conception. And that child is, is every bit that man's as it is that woman's right. And let's say that to justify that decision, they take a look at five constitutional amendments, uh, Amendments 1, 4, 5, 9, and 14. And they say that, well, you know, there is no, um, there's no right to paternity for fathers in the Constitution. There's, there's no constitutionally protected right for men to have any say in what a woman's body does. But, you know, it's, it's not expressly in the Constitution, but we can kind of read these five different amendments and put them all together uh, and it's, it's kind of in there somewhere that you know men are also parents and that men should get to say what happens with their children right that's exactly what Roe does but in the opposite context right in Roe versus Wade they said that you know a woman should 
have a right to privacy and should have a right to body autonomy, but it is not in the Constitution. It is not constitutionally protected. But, you know, if we just take Amendments 1, 4, 5, 9, and 14 and look at all five of those, um, then, uh, yeah, there's got to be a right to privacy in there somewhere. And, uh, yeah, and we can stipulate when, exactly what, when, where, and how a woman can do things with her body. You know, for the argument saying that men do not get to tell women what to do with their bodies, that is exactly what Roe v. Wade does. It is exactly what Roe versus Wade does. It tells women exactly what they can and cannot do with their bodies. And people are protesting its overturning because they say that you don't get to tell women what, when, where to do with their bodies. Well, that doesn't make any sense. It does not... It, it does not make objective sense, right? Uh, we do not have a right to privacy in this country. And that's exactly the way the government wants it. Because if we had a fundamental right to privacy, they could not conduct surveillance on us. Uh, you know, Big tech companies could not automatically collect our data. The CDC would not have been able to purchase all of our location data from cell phone providers and big tech companies. Which is exactly what they did. They were buying location data to see who was violating uh, uh, COVID lockdowns. Imagine that. Uh, so we do not have a right to privacy in this country. So what the Supreme Court has been doing this entire time is they have the power to subjectively decide when do we have a constitutional right to privacy and when do we not. Well, it's not in the Constitution. So they just, they get to decide who gets a fun, who gets a constitutionally protected right to privacy and who doesn't. And they get to decide it all willy nilly. You know, that's not exactly a power that we should be comfortable with them having. It's not. Right? So... But what does this mean if, if we overturn it? What does this actually mean for people? It means life goes on uh, exactly the way that it's been going on. Uh, I, I, people lose sight of the fact that their states long ago decided what their position on abortion is. You either live in a state where, uh, where they make it as difficult as possible to get an abortion uh, or they're... A, they're a sanctuary for abortion, right? Well, by overturning Roe v. Wade, it just gives both states the flexibility to either be an even bigger safe haven or sanctuary, or, um, you know, it gives them the right to be even more difficult, right? There's no states that, there's no pro choice states that are suddenly like, oh my goodness. We've been doing abortion this whole time, but now that it's been overturned, we can no longer do abortion. No, you don't see that. You don't see any pro-life states saying, oh, now that now that it's gone, uh, we're gonna do abortion. No, pro-life states have always been pro-life states. Pro-choice states have always been pro-choice states. Both states always do anything and everything in their power to assert that their positions. You know, so it doesn't, really change life for the majority of people. Sorry, I'm parking my car here. It's not... So, what does it change? Well, it changes the lives of strangers. It changes the lives of the imaginary crowds that we all keep in our minds, right? So, we imagine this nebulous concept of, of women who are involuntarily pregnant we'll say it, it's it's a it's a battle of moral posturing uh, about a, a largely hypothetical minority population so what we end up with we end up with the majority dictating to the minority what to do or not do based on a subjective view of reality about that minority. Because here's the thing, it doesn't matter if you're pro-choice 
or pro-life when somebody close to you actually gets pregnant and they're not quite sure what to do about it nobody wants to put themselves in the position to convince a pregnant woman one way or the other what to do about it right what do we say thoughts and prayers you know you do you you need to do what you feel is best don't let anybody else tell you what to do everybody absolves themselves of involvement in that situation seriously um right right i mean even if you're pro-life and you you talk to somebody who's considering abortion right uh somebody close to you it you you tread quite carefully when you're actually in proximity of somebody who is pregnant and is un, does not have their mind made up everybody on both sides suddenly um gets on their best behavior and doesn't and it, pretty much everybody wants to avoid being culpable in a decision that may later turn out to be not so great right so when it, when the rubber meets the road everybody just backs away slowly but on twitter everybody is so just vitriolic about their positions um you know, I'm not even going to give personal opinions uh, on this. Uh, you know, cognitive dissonance is a funny thing, right? Nobody has a sound argument here. You cannot be pro-life uh, and have, a, have an objectively sound opinion. You can't be pro-choice and have an objectively sound opinion. Otherwise, if we could have objectively sound opinions... It wouldn't be such a hotly contested political topic, now would it? Exactly. What I do know for sure is that we don't need to be in a country where there's no right to privacy except for on the whims of a Supreme Court of nine people that get to decide when do we have, a, when do we have an imaginary constitutional right and when don't we? That is a very, very dangerous uh, concept. You know, this is incredibly dangerous to our democracy, right? To, to throw, throw that quote out there. Um, ultimately, just the way I see it, I think this is a situation where it's a step backwards and we have the option to step backwards and take three steps forward if we do it right. Uh, and that would be, it's time to pass some constitutional amendments, namely an amendment that defines privacy, especially now in 2022, with all the stuff going on about misinformation and social media and personal data collection and, and, and selling our data to people. If we, if we pass an amendment that properly defines what privacy is and is not, then we not only win with the whole abortion debate, we also win the future battles for ourselves and the right to have our own autonomous lives without being constantly surveilled by the government without a warrant, which is exactly what they're doing. There's no warrants uh, that justify this mass data collection. It's, it's warrantless searches. It's, a, it's, a, it's an enormous, massive violation of the Fourth Amendment. Uh, and they're just brazenly doing it. And so I think that's really what we need to do. Um, the decision of Roe v. Wade is not as consequential as everybody wants it to be. But we need to, we need to, to put some handcuffs on these people. We need to restrain our government. We need to pass some amendments. And on top of the right to privacy, passing mandatory term limits for all politicians... Uh, would be another good one to put in there as well because then you couldn't have this oligarchy that's making all the decisions for everybody. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's the objective solution. Not constantly opining a simple, very simple idea that justifies all of your morals and, and, and your emotions. Anyways, thank you very much. I want to hear what you guys think. Do please like, comment, or share. And I'll see you all on the next one.